Hi guys! I hope you're having a fantastic day today. I wanted to make a quick little vlog. Um, I got a comment um, a few days ago, I think, which I've been expecting for a while. I was telling my husband, um, it's been a while since I mentioned that I've been really ill, so it's going to start being weird that I'm doing my um, videos in bed for <laughs> new people that are coming on and stumbling upon my channel. And um, I thought, well, I'll just wait um, until I get asked about it again, rather than just spilling everything out again, because I would rather people be like, get a chuckle and wonder why I'm in bed than be like, yes, we know you're sick, stop talking about it. So I haven't really mentioned a whole lot in every video in bed. I don't go, oh, by the way, I'm in bed because of this. But I thought, you know what, since enough people are, have been asking and so many of you are so kind and asking about my health and wondering how I am and wondering what was wrong and um, how I'm feeling, etc., I just thought I would give you guys a really quick little synopsis on what has gone on with my health. And this is um, probably the most awkward video I will ever make. So if I randomly stare off and think it's, um, I'm not as good at talking about myself as I am talking about plants. Um, so anyways, bear with me and I will try and give you um, as short of a story as possible. Um, so to start at the beginning, um, when I was about 10 years old, um, I we were down in Texas, which is where we lived at the time, and we went to visit some friends and we got into a whole bunch of ticks and chiggers. And um, I looked like I had the chicken pox, that's how bad it was, and my sister did as well. And after, uh, a couple days after that, or maybe the next day, we got a flu and, um, you know, really bad body aches and fever and um, rash all over, but um, we thought it was just the chigger bites and went on our merry way um, and continued our vacation. And every year after that, I had new symptoms that just slowly got worse. Um, they always had a lot of explanation for it. Um, first, it was your growing, you know, it's growing pains, it's, it's just your hormones, it's, you know, different things like that. And from 12 to 13, I grew a foot that year. And so it was logical that, you know, some of these things would be growing pains, etc. Um, and then I had so many accidents also as a child and injuries that, um, spinal injuries, etc., um, and neck. And so they, that was a reasonable explanation for some of the really weird symptoms I was having. They said, you know, it's, um, it's nervous damage, it's nervous system damage, and that's what's causing the pain. And that's what's probably causing some of these really weird symptoms. Um, as it progressed, um, about, uh, well, it was right after I turned 20. Um, my mother got really, really sick with cancer and passed away on my birthday, on my 20th birthday. And um, I was her primary caregiver, uh, me and my sister. And so she, she stayed home the, the whole time. She didn't want to be in the hospital. And um, I really, really wore myself out and ran myself into the ground. Um, and so... After she passed away, I my whole system just crashed, and um, I would just vomit, you know, nonstop, just 15, 20 times a day, um, just couldn't keep things down, couldn't sleep, um, was just feeling horrible, had tons of pain, and would pass out, and I, I didn't realize it, how much pain I was in at the time. I, I just thought something else was wrong and making me pass out. Um, Went to a whole bunch of doctors, went uh, back down to Texas and went to some doctors there, went to doctors up here. They did every test known to man, not quite, but you know what I mean, on my stomach, you know, gallbladder, stomach, intestines, all of that kind of stuff, because they were convinced since I was vomiting so much, it must be my stomach, and um, couldn't find anything wrong. Finally, um, a doctor finally uh, up here, when I came back up here, I was going back to school at the time, university, and... Um, they said, you know what, I think you're in pain. I think you're having so much pain that you're vomiting. And I thought, no, I've had pain in my life because I've had, you know, multiple injuries and, and broken bones and ruptured discs and, and things like that. And so I know pain and this is, this is really tolerable. And he said, you know, I still think that this is what's happening. Please just take some pain meds 
and w when you're going to vomit and see if it stops the vomiting. And I was like, well, pain meds will obviously make vomiting worse, right? Because they're really hard on your stomach. Well, he was right. And I stopped vomiting, like miraculously stopped vomiting and felt phenomenal if I took pain meds. So that made him conclude that I have endometriosis and or had, I, I still have it, but it, it was, it was a true diagnosis. And, um, so they did surgery for that. And if you don't know, endometriosis is just a a disease where the lining that should be inside of your uterus migrates out and they don't really know how they don't know if you're born that way or if it somehow travels out but it travels outside of the uterus and attaches to other organs or the inside of your abdominal wall or wherever and then every month just like the tissue inside it bleeds and sloughs off but it has nowhere to go so the um unlike when it's in your uterus, you just have a period and there it is. And, but when it's inside of your, um, abdominal cavity, the blood doesn't have anywhere to go. And it's only a few drops. It's not like there's cups and cups of blood. Each little, you know, tiny little clump of cells is only producing a few drops of blood and having a few, um, a little bit of tissue slough off, but your body doesn't like it at all. And it has basically an immune response to it um, and tries to attack it, but also it just has a huge inflammation response because everything swells up and gets really angry because it doesn't want blood in there. Um, and it can also get infected, which can cause fevers. I was having a lot of fevers um, and mystery, you know, and so anyways, they um, diagnosed that and I had surgery for that and thought, yay, that's all it was. You know, this this whole time it was just all of the, you know, injuries and, and trauma from my childhood um, on my body, you know, that was causing the stuff then and now it's just this. Um, but about two years after that surgery, I started going downhill again. Um, and it was after a really, really stressful time in my life. And um, so I just thought I was really tired um, and burnt out. And this is about the time I met my husband. And we just thought I was really tired for really, really good reasons. I had taken care of my mother. I had raised my little sister, um, done a lot of that. And um, a lot of the just household family stuff at home when my mom was dying, plus working, plus being sick. And so... Um, we just thought I was tired, you know, it just needed a break. And, um, so we got married and, um, this was about nine years ago and, um, just slowly kept declining. And during this time we kept seeking out other doctors, just more and more symptoms, more and more, um, pain, more and more issues, more and more unexplainable, um, problems, but nothing that stopped me from living. I just, powered through, which is the opposite of what I should have done. I now know, but you know, live and learn. Um, I am a very go, 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 go person. I have, I mean, yeah, I have just always been a go, go person. And so, um, sitting around and resting and recouping is not something that I do very well with. Um, so anyways, to make a really long story short, everything just kept declining, declining, declining. Finally, the doctor said, you know what? We think that this endometriosis is just causing so, um, actually rewind first, they said you have MS and lupus. Um, but the tests just aren't showing up positive yet. This is super common. Lots of people have to have the test, you know, 20, 25 times before it will come back positive because it has to be at a certain place in the cycle of flare up or something. Um, but they were like, you know, all of your symptoms, this is, you know, the, the weird nervous system, unexplainable stuff. It's MS or lupus or both. And, um, and so that was, that was thrown into the mix. And then when things kept getting worse, they said, you know, we think a lot of this is hormonal and from the endometriosis. And if you could get pregnant and stay pregnant and have a baby, a lot of times that will reset your whole hormone system and people can just feel a ton better. And, um, yeah, it can be great. Um, and my mom had had similar experiences. She had extremely, extremely, um, whacked out hormonal stuff and then having children really, really set her system a lot better as well. So it seemed plausible to me, um, at the time. So we decided, okay, that was fine. We'd been married for about four years and, um, love, love children, always wanted to have children anyways. And so 
we thought, great. Um, but I couldn't stay pregnant. I lost three babies and we finally said, okay, never mind. Um, we're not going to do that. If we want kids, we will adopt and, um, we're just going to have to figure out something else to do for my body. About two months after that, I, surprise, surprise, got pregnant and stayed pregnant. And so we have our beautiful, beautiful little boy who is six now. And he, um, so sadly the pregnancy didn't help me. I almost died. The pregnancy was horrific. I was horrendously ill. He was born preemie. He died twice on the table for us and was life lighted, um, to a really large hospital Then was the sickest baby there for weeks. Um, and so it wasn't, um, it wasn't the fix that we hoped for. And after having the baby, I, I was so much worse. The pregnancy was horrible. I was vomiting, you know, 30 times a day, all eight months, which he was early. So he was eight months. Um, and just, um, extremely malnourished and very, very sick. And so, um, after he was born, we thought, well, maybe I just need to recover right from the pregnancy, even though that was what was supposed to be helping me. And I never recovered and I got worse and worse and worse until, um, I was passing out and having so many seizures every day from the pain that, um, a doctor said, you know what, you're going to have to go on pain meds or you're going to have permanent brain damage until we figure out what's going on. Um, so in the meantime, in this, in this interim, we were going to every doctor. We're very naturally minded. And so we went to every, you know, totally fine with the medical system. Just we're doing both. We went to the Mayo Clinic. We went to naturopaths. We went to chiropractors. We went to nutritionists. We went to MDs, you know, everyone, everyone that we could find, um, to try and get to the bottom of this. And, um, I had asked my doctor multiple times and several doctors, I had had two over this time period, um, to test me for Lyme disease because um, I knew I had gotten bit by all of those ticks and chiggers when I was 11, and that's when everything, I was quite a healthy child, um, and so that's when everything really started going downhill. And so, and they said, no, it's not possible, your symptoms aren't right, and we don't have ticks here that have Lyme disease in Idaho. And I said, well, I wasn't raised in Idaho, I was raised in Texas, I live here now. And they said, well, your symptoms aren't right. And I brought it up several times because, um, of course they diagnosed me with fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome and all of that stuff. But these diagnoses were all just kind of, we don't know what's wrong with you. So here's a label and no answers, no possible solutions really. And I was getting worse and worse and worse. And so I'm like, no, 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 something is really wrong here. It's either an infection or something else. And so I kept um, bringing it up, not a lot, but every few months I would say, okay, I know we're thinking it's not Lyme, but is there any chance that it could be? And finally, um, I got so sick that I said, you know what? We are paying for it anyways, because insurance doesn't cover this test. And, um, so I want this test. I want this, um, Lyme disease test. It's not the standard test that they do at a doctor's office because those are like 20% accurate at best. You get a false negative, um, up to 80% of the time. And so we sent it off to a lab that specializes in that. And the doctor agreed. He's, he's, he's fine. He was like, okay, that's fine. If it'll make you feel better. And I said, that's at this point. Yes. I just want to know that I don't have it. Right. Cause it's probably not that. I just want to know. Um, well, it came back positive and, um, turns out in, after our whole journey that Lyme disease itself was actually one of the more mild problems, um, which it's a huge problem. Don't get me wrong. And people can die and, and get deathly sick from it for sure. But, um, there was multiple other infections that once we found the Lyme, we knew to look for. And so, um, once we found the Lyme, the, we decided to get a specialist um, not, not just a, our regular family doctor. So we had to travel for that, um, at, to Seattle and we, um, got a specialist for Lyme and started trying to kill these infections. The problem is that during pregnancy, your immune system is suppressed so that your body doesn't reject your baby, um, because it's new DNA. It's different, right? It's a different person other than you. And so it sees it as a foreign object. Your immune system sees it as a foreign object and will attack it. And so the only way that you can, um, come to, 
go to term with a pregnancy is for your immune system to suppress itself. And it does as it should. However, when it did that, it allowed the um, infections to go absolutely insane for eight months. And that's why I got incredibly, incredibly deathly ill and so much worse afterwards. And so um, it was so late in the game by this point. I um, It attacked my brain. My whole nervous system freaked out. I was paralyzed from the waist down for almost eight months. Um, and my whole gut, everything was completely paralyzed and plus my legs, all of that and, and wheelchair bound. If I tried to sit up, if I tried to move, most days I would instantly pass out or go into a seizure. Um, my husband had to carry me to the bathroom, carry me in and out every time. I had two years of 24 7 care 24 hours a day seven days a week care I could never be left alone I could never be left with my son um, I didn't even know who I was or if I had taken my medication or if I had had a drink of water or who Jesse was that's my husband most of the time I knew nothing I um, was so close to death so so many times um, that it is an absolute miracle that I am still here and we are so so grateful um,